Hey everyone, welcome back to Data Science. In this video today, I'll be telling you about OpenAI O3 Mini has finally been released. So I'll be telling you all about this model and I'll be also telling you that for whom this O3 Mini is means for which plan is it, whether it's for plus plan, pro plan, team plan, or even it's for free or not. So I'll be telling you all about it. So stay tuned until the end so that you don't miss any information regarding it. So let's get right into it. So OpenAI O3 Mini, it's pushing the frontier of cost effective reasoning. To the response after the deep seek has been released, OpenAI has rushed to release O3 Mini. It was released yesterday and they said OpenAI O3 Mini has been released and it's the newest and most cost efficient model in the reasoning series. And it's also available in both ChatGPT and the API. Before it was previewed, I already made a video about it in which they told about O3 Mini. Now this powerful and fast model, so it advances the boundaries of what model can achieve. And it delivers the exceptional STEM capabilities with particular strength in science, math and coding. And also while maintaining the low cost and reduced latency of OpenAI O1 Mini. And the OpenAI O3 Mini is the first small reasoning model that supports the highly requested developer features in which there's function calling, structured outputs, and also developer messages, making it production ready out of the gate. And like OpenAI O1 Mini and OpenAI O1 Preview, O3 Mini will support streaming. And also developers can choose between three reasoning effort options. There's like three types of options in which you can choose from low, medium, and high to optimize for their specific use cases. And this flexibility actually allows O3 Mini to think harder when tackling the complex challenges, complex problems, and also prioritize speed when latency is a concern. And O3 Mini does not support vision capabilities. So you can now find vision capabilities in O3 Mini. So developers should continue using OpenAI O1 for visual reasoning tasks. So if you want to do the task for the visual reasoning, then OpenAI O1 is there for it. And O3 Mini is rolling out in the chat competitions API, assistance API, and batch API starting today to select developers in the API usage tiers three to five. And the people who can use the O3 mini is in ChatGPT, the plus users, team users, and pro users can access O3 mini. So the enterprise access is coming in February and O3 will actually replace OpenAI O1 mini in the model picker in which it offers the higher rate limits and lower latency, making it a choice for coding, STEM, and logical problem-solving tasks. Okay, so as part of this upgrade, what they're doing now in O3 Mini, they're also tripling the rate limit for Plus and Team users. Before, there was 50 messages per day with the O1 Mini. Now it's 150 messages per day with O3 Mini. Additionally, now what O3 Mini does, it now works with the search to find up-to-date answers with links to relevant web sources. This is an early prototype as we work to integrate search across our reasoning models. And starting today means it was yesterday, 31st was yesterday. So the free plan users also can try OpenAI O3 Mini by selecting reason. So you just click the button reason and then you can use the O3 Mini model. But you cannot have the option for low, medium and high. You cannot have that option in the free tire. So by selecting reason in the message composer or by regenerating a response, you can try OpenAI O3 Mini. And they say it's the first time a reasoning model has been made available to free users in ChatGPT. And how while well OpenAI O1 remains the broader general knowledge reasoning model, OpenAI O3 Mini provides a specialized alternative for those technical domains that require precision and speed. And in ChatGPT, O3 Mini uses medium reasoning effort to provide a balanced trade-off between speed and Accuracy. And all paid users will have the option of selecting O3 Mini High in the model picker for a higher intelligence version that makes a little longer to generate responses. And pro users will have 
unlimited access to both O3 Mini and O3 Mini High. In ChatGPT, that O3 Mini model will be used. It will be the option of medium. So a medium reasoning model will be used for O3 to provide the balance between the speed and accuracy. And it is fast, powerful, and optimized for STEM reasoning. So it's similar to OpenAI O1. OpenAI O3 Mini has been optimized for STEM reasoning and O3 Mini with medium reasoning effort, it matches O1's performance in math. O3 Mini with medium reasoning option, it matches O1's performance in math, coding and science while delivering the faster responses. Evaluations by expert testers showed that O3 Mini produces more accurate and clearer answers with stronger reasoning abilities than OpenAI O1 Mini. And also testers, they preferred the O3 Mini's response to O1 Mini 56% of the time, and they observed a 39% reduction in major errors on difficult real-world problems. And with medium reasoning effort, O3 Mini matches the performance of O1 on some of the most challenging reasoning and intelligence evaluation, including AIME and GPQA. Here, what they're saying that O3 Mini in medium mode, it matches the performance of O1 on some of the most challenging reasons and intelligence evaluation in which AIME is included and GPQA is included. Okay, so AIME 2024 is the competition for math. So this is the benchmark for competition math. And here it's AIME 2024. And if you see here, and if you see here the scores of O3 mini low, O3 mini medium, and O3 mini high. So here in O3 mini low, in O3 mini low, you see here the score is 60.0. And it's more than O1 preview, but less than O1 and O1 mini. But in O3 mini medium, the score is 79.6. So it's more than O1 mini and more than O1 review, but less than O1. That what they were saying that the O3 mini in medium mode defeats O1 mini. Whereas O3 mini high, it has a score of 87.3%. And it's the highest one than the other O1 models. For PhD level science questions, that's GPQA Diamond. GPQA Diamond is the benchmark for PhD level science questions. And for that, the score is in O3 mini low, the score is 70.6, which is better than O1 mini. And in O3 mini medium, the score is 76.8, which is better than O1 mini, but not better than O1 and O1 preview. And for O3 mini high, the score is 79.7 and it's better than the other O1 models. In Frontier Math, if you see here the score of O3 mini high, O1 mini and O1. At pass at 1, the score is 9.2%. Here O1 mini is 5.8% and O1 is 5.5%. And at pass at 4 times, it's 16.6%. Here is 9.9% and O1 is 10%. But at pass at 8, the score of O3 mini is still high. It's 20%. For O1 mini, it's 12.8%. And O1 is 12.8%. So at pass at 8, O1 mini and O1 has the same score. But O3 mini has a better score than the both O1 and O1 mini. And for the competition code in code forces, the ELO, the scores of it for O3 mini is 1831, better than O1 mini. And O3 mini medium is 2036, better than O1 mini. And the score of O3 mini in high mode, the score is 2130. And it's better than the other models in which O1 mini, O1 and O1 preview is also included. Regarding the API price for the OpenAI O3 mini, so in the model of O3 mini, the pricing is $1.10 for 1 million input tokens. And for the cached input tokens, the price is $0.55 for 1 million cached input tokens. And for the output tokens, the price is $4.40 for 1 million output tokens. And the pricing with batch API is $0.55 for 1 million input tokens. 
and 2.20 for 1 million output tokens. So this is the price for the OpenAI O3 Mini for the API. So now I'm here at ChatGPT and here I click on this button called Reason. This is a button called Reason in which ChatGPT uses the model O3 Mini in the medium mode. So I wrote that write the snake game in Python. So it taught for writing the snake game in Python for a couple of seconds. Then it's formulating the solution. And after that, it's giving the code. And this code, I just copy pasted in my VS code. I'll show you now. So here in this folder, I activated the virtual environment and I added the file.py file and it's called snake game. So I added the whole code that I copied from ChatGPT as it is. I didn't change anything in the code. So now I'll run it and see whether it actually works or not. So here I'll say that run without debugging. So here is a snake game and I'll see whether it actually works or not. So the green is the snake and the blue is the food. So you see here there's a snake and it's going and you can see it's eating the food and then growing the size. So the snake game is actually working. But it, when it goes out of the window, the game would be finished. Now you got the message of the game over. You can press C to play again or Q for a quit. So the snake game is working actually. If you like this video, do like, subscribe and comment down below whether you like this model or not. So that's all from my side. Stay here, stay innovative and catch you next time. Bye bye.